Charles, carry on. I just read your book all the way through the sex.com chronicles, a white hat lawyer's journey to the dark side of the internet. Charles, why did you write this book? Well, um, I always wanted to be a writer, and uh, this was the first thing that happened to me that I thought a large number of other people would be interested in hearing about. Uh, it's a lot of work to write a book. Tell me about the journey to, of writing this. You know, the way, um, the way it happened was the whole time it was happening, the whole time the sex.com case, Kremen versus Cohen, was happening, I was well aware that it was not an ordinary event. I mean, it was... It was just there were too many weird things happening. In the first place, there was no reason why I would end up representing a person who had a case as important as uh, litigating to recover sex.com, except that no other lawyer really wanted to work on it. Um, so I realized that it, from the very beginning that the, you know fate had chosen me to work together with Gary in uh, recovering the domain. And uh, as... You know, as it developed, it, everything was so dramatic and so exciting and so unique. It just it drew me in. So as I went through it, you know, if you're a lawyer, uh, you're usually billing as you go along. So you end up with, it necessarily, you have very detailed notes of all the events, and then you can go through all the correspondence. And uh, when it came time to start writing the book, uh, it was kind of as a result of, of the fact that my my partnership with Gary did not work out, and I found myself uh, basically fired um, about two months after I had run the case. And uh, so then I ended up uh, litigating with Gary, and every time I had to work on my case, I had to think about it. And it wasn't particularly pleasant. I found myself on the road a lot, uh, traveling to court hearings and depositions in which I was litigating against my former partner to get my share of the deal. And uh, I would, uh, you know, I always had my dictation machine along, and so I would uh, just dictate my recollections of the events. And I just decided to start at the beginning and to tell the story as it happened to me. And uh, then uh, after I had written, oh, I had written a few chapters and I thought, well, I ought to try and find an agent. So I uh, dictated up uh, a, a treatment of around 30 pages and I sent it around and I did get an agent. Uh, I was called by a guy named Theron Rains and uh, Theron had represented Bruno Bettelheim and... Uh, uh, Winston Groom, the author of Forrest Gump, and James Dickey, the author of The Deliverance, and, uh, which was made into that movie that everybody used to see, but probably everyone's forgotten by now. Oh, and, uh, yeah, fantastic, fantastic. So I was thrilled. Um, we hit it off. He was very encouraging, and I decided to go ahead and um, write what turned out to be the first 36 chapters. Um, and see if uh, Theron could give me a book contract, which he was pretty optimistic about. Uh, but after writing 36 chapters, I sent it to him, and he sent it around, got a nice stack of great rejection letters, and, uh, and he called it the best book he couldn't sell. So I laid off of it for a while, uh, and uh, I think about probably about a year and a half, maybe even two years elapsed. And, uh, and then... I, it, that was oh, like another two years during which I was litigating with Gary. It took three years to resolve the case with Gary, and we settled. And at that point, um, I had more time on my hands. I had more money in my bank account. Um, and I still had this huge experience that I needed to process. So uh, that's when I went back to it, and I, I wrote the end of the book. The end of the book was much harder to write uh, than, than the beginning. Uh, but uh, it... Uh, I think it turned out well. I'm, I'm happy with it. Which part of the end of the book? Starting where? Well, um, it, it, the first 36 chapters takes you through uh, something called uh, the last, the 36th chapter, I believe, is called Becoming the Enemy. And it was at that point where uh, I took that phrase from Sun Tzu. And he calls becoming the enemy, basically putting yourself in the shoes of the enemy to realize what things look like from their side. 
And so that chapter was the point when I put myself in, in Steve Cohen's position and realized that if he had any sense, he would know that he was going to lose. Um, and so at that point, you know, from the dynamics of, of how a drama is written, um, that, that's sort of, you've, you've hit the peak and that the action is fully charged up, and now it's going to start unloading and, and carry you towards the climax. Um, all the way to the climax, getting to the climax of the case, which is November 27, 2000, when Judge Ware says there's nothing left to try, gives Gary the domain, um, and um, hits Cohen with a, uh, an order that is so hard that Cohen just becomes a fugitive and basically never comes to court. All that part was really easy to write. What was really hard to write was, uh, and I must have written three times as much material as I used, uh, was um, from that climactic point, which was victory from Gary's point of view and from my point of view as well, um, until uh, ha basically having my, my career as a, as a pornographer unravel and, uh, within, within about two months and then spending the next three years litigating with Gary, uh, trying to get uh, what had been uh, promised to me, I felt had been promised to me, in, uh, in the agreement that we'd signed back in 1999. So that was the hard part, because that, I mean, I read this story one time in the news about a guy who was sailing around the world, and halfway around the world, he, he, had, a, he had a terrible, terrible storm and an accident, and he was badly, badly injured. He was actually bleeding to death in the bottom of his boat. And uh, he corresponded with a surgeon by email. And the surgeon actually um, instructed him on how to stitch himself up. And he survived, and he finished his sailing uh, and, uh, and came back to civilization. And I really felt that in some sense that writing the book for me was that. It, was, it felt like that. I would get up in the morning, and I would have my coffee, and I would go down to uh, Bloomsbury Books in Ashland, Oregon, and sit on the back porch, and I'd try and write another chapter. And, uh, and it, just, it was like doing surgery on myself. But ultimately, it was successful. I did survive. And uh, I think the book uh, is, is healing because of that. And healing for anyone. Anyone and everyone does go through a trauma uh, if you live long enough. I'm sure everyone goes through a trauma of betrayal, of frustration, of having everything that they thought would turn out one way turn out the other way. And then they have to work their way through it. How many hours did you put into this, do you think? Oh, if, I, I would say very likely around... 2,000 to 3,000 hours, I would say. Yeah, it feels like it feels like two work, two years worth of legal work, and I, I usually build around 15, 1,600 hours a year. So, so uh, yeah, it feels like felt like about two years worth of, of concentrated work. But, uh, and did anyone help you with it? Um. Uh, the, uh, you know, aside from uh, Kim in uh, Medford who transcribed it, um, not really too much. Uh, uh, Theron's encouragement was invaluable. That was sort of the, the shout out from somebody who I knew knew how to judge good writing. Um, my daughter Maria uh, went through it and uh, gave me some important criticisms. Uh, she helped me to. Uh, to make, uh, I think, the one disgusting scene in the book uh, not disgusting. I think that was important. Uh, she gave me a little feedback. And, uh, um, and then my daughter, Anna, had also uh, given me feedback uh, during the earlier part of the book. She read through parts of it. And uh, so my daughters, and then, of course, my wife was always uh, cheering me on, uh, like, finish it, dude, kind of like that. <laughs> <laughs> And and has writing this book changed you? It definitely did because now I'm an author. Uh, it, I always wanted to be from the time I was a little kid. And I, I started to read when I was four years old. I was an early reader. And the first book I read was uh, The Treasure of the Sierra Madre, which I think I mentioned in the, uh, in the mm -hmm. Sex.com Chronicles. And, uh, and I just remember from you know, my earliest readerhood that I always thought it was the greatest thing that anyone could do would be to 
bring you into their 